Welcome into Running It Straight, folks, for uh, your Thursday, 28th of March, as we talk NRL for the next hour, with a specific focus, of course, on uh, the Warriors. Anthony Galling alongside me for the next uh, 60 minutes. You can text you anytime on double eight double three. You can give us a call on 0800 150 811. What's coming up on the show today? We'll have a look uh, just back over round three. The Warriors getting the win over the Raiders down in Christchurch, as well as a few other games, Some big injuries around the competition. Uh, we're going to catch up with Jazz Tavanga out of the Warriors as well. Um, I don't know what to call Jazzy, a utility? Jello, what are you? He's a everything. He's a everything man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You nearly broke that mic, by the way. I think it's already broken. <laughs> it's smelling a little spicy too. Is I it? don't know who was sitting here earlier. <laughs> Probably had a curry for lunch. Um, <laughs> so we're going to catch up with Jazz very, very shortly. Some uh, interesting questions to, to pose to him. And um, we put uh, a thing out on Facebook yesterday asking for questions. Lots of them came in. If you want us to put something to Jazz, just text her on double eight double three, and we'll uh, we'll ask him when we talk to him in about uh, ten minutes' time. We'll have a look at the team lists uh, name for Sunday afternoon. The Warriors and the Knights at Go Media Stadium, Mount Smart, with some interesting changes. Some force there as well and we'll finish the show by going through our uh, round four tips for the weekend uh first and foremost let's let's have a little chat about round three uh jello uh the competition as a whole injury city and uh if you're a fantasy nrl player like pretty much everyone in this office mate you're uh, you're thrashing the trades uh yeah. in round three yeah, there's a few injuries man a lot of key ones too that's the thing yeah big names big names plays that when you take them out they can change the whole dynamic of a team so uh, it makes for a very interesting round four. So uh, Steph asked me this morning and, and uh, was also talking about on the show this afternoon, uh, his theory is that m in rugby league more so than anything, uh, the number seven or your sort of, you know, your, your playmaker like a number 10 in rugby, and more so in rugby league, losing a, your number seven has a much bigger impact than almost any other sport in any other position. Do you do you subscribe to that? Do you uh, think is a number seven that important to a team when you think of Mitchell Moses, Nathan Cleary, all these guys that are getting injured and not playing? I subscribe to that, but I think not as much as basketball. If you, you lose your main man in basketball, I think that's that's more so of, you a, compare more it of to, an impact. So like a marquee guy in basketball? Like yeah, it's very or, similar. Yeah. Like your you know, who's your main scorer, who's your go to? You know, who's gonna who's gonna get you get you through? So the Warriors are lucky at the moment, Jello, in the fact that we're not dealing with an injury like that. Sean Johnson, touch wood. Uh, but we are dealing with a couple of injuries. Uh, mm. That game in Christchurch against the Rays, it was a big one for the Warriors because they needed to get two points on the board. They had to get over that bump. They hadn't been able to get over in the first two rounds. We, we talked about last week, you know, they're not a team that felt 0-2. Um, they still don't feel like a team that's 1-2. They feel like a team that probably should be 3-0. and mm. um, Things did click a little bit for them. There's still parts of that game which, you know, they, like the, the last pass or, you know, ball to ground or just a couple of uh, sort of lapses in, in concentration, whatever it might be, that is missing. But do you feel like maybe getting that win on Sunday is going to, on um, Friday, sorry, is going to lift you know, lift that sort of demon off their backs, as it were, might might give them the momentum they're looking for. Yeah, for sure. That was that was a really tough assignment that Canberra game. Um, it showed how how tough, um, you know, how tight the score was at the end. Um, with five minutes to go, Canberra looked like they could score at any minute, and you know, it was an eight point game, turn it into a turn it into a two point game with um, with seconds left. So, uh, you talk about some of the missed opportunities, missed chances. Uh, if you break it down, like I know there was that early one when um, Jackson Ford went through on that break, he had Luke Metcalf flying up. Yeah, Luke Metcalf was miles behind him. Yeah, so I think when Jackson looked across, he didn't, he wouldn't have seen him. Like Luke closed the gap very fast. That's yeah. how quick he is. And yeah. for us watching on TV, it's like, oh, he's right there, just pass it. Yeah, but Jackson wouldn't have seen him until you know he made the decision to tuck it and yeah. and take the tackle. And, and then you know moments later we score with that try from Adam. So. Um, he's a second rower as well, Jackson. He's a Foster. second rower, yeah. You know, they, they get a Run bit awkward. First. Yeah, I'm yeah, an exactly, open space. Exactly. What do I do? Tom Ali's one cracked me up when he um, <laughs> straight off the bench and but, into space. But it was a great pass to Mitch Barnett. Oh, it was he, a great he pass, He got it man. around the man and everything. Yeah, I thought he was going all the way. But yeah, um, yeah nah, it's, uh, I think I think uh, you talk about like momentum, you know, is this team building momentum? Mm. I think, you know, Canberra, you'd say they went into that game with momentum. Um, after 10 minutes, you could say that momentum's gone. So I don't think momentum carries week to week. I yeah. think it changes within the game. Yeah. You know, you could be, you know, win six games on the trot. If you show up and a team puts four tries on you in the first 20 minutes, yeah. 
you know, that momentum's gone. Doesn't yeah. matter what happened all those unless weeks earlier. Unless you're the Dragons. Uh-huh. Unless you're the Dragons. Well, you saw it in the Eels game too. So Eels, they, they were on, yeah. a, on a great run. Yeah. You know, and then Manly hit them, you know, 14 nil after 10 minutes. Yeah. Now you could say, well, their momentum's gone, but they yeah. do enough to turn the momentum again back. and claw it back. And yeah. that was a great game of footy. Holy yeah. hell. Yeah. And, the, and I take Andrew Webster's comments after the game as well that, you know, arguably the Warriors played better in the two losses. Mm. But he said, but it's games like this that actually teach you a lot and you need to win them and just winning them when you're in that grind and you know both teams are sort of making mistakes and letting the other team come back in but staying strong sometimes those are the more important two points than the ones when you win by 40 you know yeah um well so it's, it's interesting because it seems to me too that the warriors seem to play better when they are behind right you know when they get in front and hold that lead it seems like they just kind of put the cue in the rack and you know like they play quite conservative as it is, but yep. when they have that lead, it's even more so. So you saw them with a the lead for you know a lot of that Canberra game, not one offload. So okay. the whole game. When was the last time you ever saw not one offload yeah. in an entire game, especially from a Warriors side? So so that's a good question though, Jello. Like, is that a maybe a criticism or is that maybe they need to be a little bit more ruthless? I've heard that from fans as well. Like mm. they want us to be more ruthless when we've put a couple of tries on a team or we've got points on the board like put the, the the foot on the throat be a little bit more expansive try a few more things because it, to your point like sometimes it does seem that that they, they go conservative mode and they're happy just to sort of get through the sets and not do anything too risky well it, it makes it difficult then so if you're playing super conservative at the times when you do need points and you need something creative and you need something to break the game open it's hard to then flick that switch between you know let's do everything to the t and no offloads and yeah play conservative into, all right, we need to create something all of a sudden and it has to happen now on this set because we're running out of time. Like, it, yeah, it's so, hard. So, I mean, what, what would you what would you rather, a, a team that is... I'd, I'd, I'd rather a team that get on top and stay on top and yeah. keep the foot on the pedal and just, you know, keep, keep giving it to them. And I think, you know, if you are leading by eight points, ten points, you know, still contest the kick as if you were... Needing points, yep. you know, as if you were losing, yep. you know, because that, that, that builds pressure as well. No, I feel you. Um, we're going to get Jason Wang up very, very short. You can call uh, text through, sorry, on double eight double three. any questions that you do have. Um, just quickly before we get to him, uh, Jello, if there was, I guess, a, a weakness outside of maybe what we were just talking about, a, a sort of something from that Raiders game that you'd just like to see the Warriors be a bit better at this week against Newcastle, is there anything that just sort of sticks out straight away for you? Um, straight away, uh, I think... Nothing off the top of my head. I think they they done well. I think you know they could have gone there and lost quite easily, you know. But they done they done really well. The um the thing to take away from me was um the intensity of the game. You know that was that's what I found interesting was you know it was like a finals game. It was like a you know prelim final. It yeah. wasn't. It didn't feel like round four versus Canberra. Yeah. You know, in no, Christchurch. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> they had that feel for sure. Yeah, for sure. But even across the league, like I looked at, um, you know, the Roosters, the Roosters Bunnies game. Um, you know, there was nearly a packed house at Allianz, and then you know when the Eels played the Seagulls, same kind of thing. It was like finals footy vibe. Yeah. You know, it's um, definitely yeah. getting a lot of really quality games through the first three or four rounds. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, not that the NRL, you know, you should expect that with the NRL, but um, yeah, it just seems to your point that we're getting a lot of these high intensity, real sort of slugfest games. And, big crowds, and, yeah, big and, anticipation. And right to the end, right? Like how yeah. many games are coming down to sort of the last 10 minutes or maybe even a last minute try, uh, not to bring back the old wounds of two weeks ago, but uh, you know, <laughs> there are quite a few that seem to be coming down to the wire. Right, um, very, uh, very special pleasure to uh, welcome uh, to the show now, Jazz Tavanga. Um, Jello's calling him the Warriors everything man. He's a fan favourite. When we said we were getting him on, we're flooded with uh, messages uh, uh, wanting to put questions uh, to the man himself. He, he joins us on the line now. Uh, Jazz, welcome in, mate. Hey, mate. How are you going? My good mate, <laughs> Jello. How are you, Brett? Hey, you're swearing on the radio already. Great start, Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, frick, frick, frick. <laughs> Oh my gosh! How's uh, how, how's how's the week um, tracking for the team, Jazzy? Obviously, a good uh, a good game down in Christchurch, getting the win over Canberra, two points on the board to start twenty twenty four, which is fantastic. And uh, sort of, I don't know, is it, is it hometown for you, Jazzy? I know you sort of spent time down there as a youngster. Does it feel like home to you down there? Um, yeah, it's a weird one, sort of. Um, like my mum's family is all still down there. Um, you know, I spent my first five years there, but um, home for me. Is, is Pop Chris South Auckland, so um, yeah, it does feel nice to go back and play in front of them. But um, yeah, home is yeah, SA. 
<laughs> yeah, and and I guess yeah. What I, what's what's the vibe uh, now in, in the team now that you do have that two points? Uh, we, me and Jello have just been talking about it for the last ten or so minutes. You know, it felt like through the first two rounds with the losses, it didn't feel like the, a team that was zero and two with the performances you put out. But I guess yeah, just the mentality around the team now that you've got over the the hoodoo of of getting the win and getting the two points. How's the how's the mood, the vibe in the team this week? Yeah, the the vibe's good. Um, it was a bit of a sigh of relief to to get that win out of the way. I think. Um, in, in the first two runs that you looked at, we, we played a lot better, um, but we just come up short. And um, yeah, we were doing some good things, but we were doing some real dumb, dumb stuff. And um, even though we did still did some dumb stuff in the Raiders game, we were able to um, hold on to the lead and, and get the win. Hey, Jazzy, what's, um, what's your preferred position? A lot of people want to ask that question. <laughs> Straight to the heart. Bro, Straight I'm to the heart, right. brother. Yeah. Where do you want to play? I, 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 I prefer lock, bro, but. These days, lock and prop, there's not really much difference. Um, hate hooker, so I'll say 13, bro. That's my preferred. Because <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people wonder too, like it's, it's like you have a very deceptive body. How how heavy are you? I'm 95 kilos. Mm, see, Google has you at 98. <laughs> so I, 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 think, I, think, I think that was me a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> coming off <laughs> Well, I wanted to I wanted to get you in the studio for this interview because we got a lie detector here. <laughs> oh, what? You got and the bloody scales? Got the scales as well. <laughs> got a set of scales. scales too, so yeah. you can't escape. Jello no, broke those on the first day, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite deceptive because, you know, you're not the tallest guy. Um, I've seen you playing playing prop for cup, but, um, yeah, you definitely have an impact and definitely bend the line. Um, one of my earliest jazz jazz memories, jazz to Vanga memories, was um, that 2018 season. Uh, pre-season, I think we played round one over in Perth. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah. So it was you, myself, and Mason Lino. We were left out of the um, the seventeen. We didn't play. Yeah. So we didn't play. We watched that game, and by the time we got back to the hotel to do our extras, they sent us down to the park across the road, and we got flogged in the yeah. dark. <laughs> do you remember yeah, that? I remember we that. got back late, and um, mate, since then, uh, I think you played round two when someone got injured. I think Bully might have got injured. He played round two, and then just never looked back. Yeah, yeah, that's right, bro. Um, I think you picked up Dalian yeah, that year. What's what, what was the biggest change, like you know, from your sixteen, seventeen season to you know that eighteen was like a real breakthrough year for you. What what was the kind of biggest difference you reckon? I think sixteen was a good introduction for me. Like I was a rookie and see debut and played a couple of games. But that seventeen year, I thought you know I had ego about myself and I thought I was the man. Um, got all this attention, you know, it was getting good money. Going out, getting on the piss, and then when Mox came, I'd I'd been done for. Sorry, Mox is Stephen Kearney. When he came, I'd been done for um, drink driving, and I was playing the Maldives tournament, which we're not allowed to play in. And Mox basically said to me, "He's like, bro, one more f up, you're gone." And that was like a huge wake up to me, bro. And I was just like, I thought I was the man when I wasn't. I'd done nothing in the game, and I really had to, you know, humble myself and and um, get professional because um, I was going to have a short career if I didn't. And you've, and you've never touched a drop of alcohol ever since? Well, I have, mate. I just <laughs> pick and cheese, you know. I'm a bit smarter these days, um, Charles. I'm a bit smarter. My dad now, mate, so. Yeah. yeah oh, congratulations too, mate. Number, number, yeah. uh, number two. Thanks, brother. Awesome, Thanks, man. brother. Just, um, <laughs> just actually on that jazz, um, and I'll get to some of the listeners' questions as well. People that had uh, that have messaged us when we said that we were getting getting on. Um, someone texted in and said, um, "Can you ask Jazz um, if fatherhood has changed him in any way, and how it may have changed his mindset in regards to his rugby league priorities, etc." So yeah, I guess just a comment on you know how that how that father that dad journey has maybe changed your your out your outlook on the game and and what you do. Yeah, I think. Um yeah, funny that you're talking about now. I'm I'm off contract, so and then um, looking at how we I've been sort of favoured in the team um, as as to now I'm sort of you know in the I'm, I'm finding it hard to make the team, and that sort of puts things being a dad puts things into perspective. You know, I know this is a business, and I want to stay at the Warriors. I love the Warriors, and I'll, if I had it my way, I I would stay here. But um, you know, you got to weigh up these sort of things, and and you know this is a game and this is a business. So um, that's definitely made me think about, you know, my, my other options and, and my future, um, even though my focus now is on the worries. But, yeah, being a dad, it's putting things into perspective. And, and yeah, I've, I've got to start thinking about looking after my family and, um, yeah, knowing that I might not be here next year. Mm. It's a reality. 
I know, I know, Jazzy, you probably, you know, that those sort of conversations are, are private and that sort of thing, but has there been any sort of approach to, to what you're thinking next year, any conversations even with the Warriors that may have happened, or is it just a matter of, I guess, getting through the year and, and looking at that in the off-season? I think from the Warriors, where they're coming from, is that if you look at my, the last 24 months, um, I got done for shoulder rico, and then last year I had a, a long layoff too through injury. So um, from them, they're just like, we want to see you fo- play footy. You know, you're a warrior. Uh, but we need to see it. Um, we need to see your body hold up, and that's fair enough for them. Um, and you know, I've had a good preseason, and I've put myself in good stead. So I just gotta, yeah, play footy now, bro, and let let my footy do the talking. Hey, um, Jazzy, I know last year uh, preseason, uh, you raised a lot of money for your our, our mate Roman. Um, just wondering if we could get an update yep. with um, mm. you know Roman's situation. How much money did you guys end up raising in the end? We ended up raising um, eighty nine thousand dollars. Wow! Um, wow, boy, that's so good. Which, which, which was really good, um, I think. But we thought, you know, the treatment was a hundred thousand, but his consultation was like almost a hundred thousand. That wasn't even a treatment. So um, treatment is about another extra two hundred. So um, is that all in New Zealand? It's pretty expensive, bro. That's yeah. in America, bro. So oh, expensive. I see. Um, that, that's including, you know, his accommodation and, and all that. Um, so, yeah, we're probably going to have to do something um, in the future to get him over the line. But, um, you know, there was a massive effort to even you know, raise that amount of money. And it was crazy to see the support that um, jumped in behind me to help help Roman. Yeah, that's, um, that's awesome, man. It's good to, um, yeah, it's good to, um, you know, we'll definitely be, be available to um, help out with any, any future things like that. Um, as far as the bald head, is that... Um, is that still going ahead? Oh, cuz they have got no option now. That's what I'm <laughs> well, that was the rumors. The rumors were that the so, whole thing was a setup, um, just to well, just to cover the ball and jazz. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it it was a coincidence, and oh, uh, it was a coincidence, and I sort of went down the alley like, yeah, shake my head for, for Roman, but really, my hair was. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> we got it. It's okay. We got a dump. Um, we got a dump button in there, mate. So yeah, we're, we're keeping you a check. <laughs> Start a Matt start Lodge, a swear jar um, for you, mate. That'll raise some money. Yeah, sorry, sorry, mate. But yeah, uh, Matt, Matt Lodge went to um, Europe last year and he stopped over in Turkey. Bro, and you should see if you type in Matt Lodge Warriors, like what his head looked like. And if I send you this photo, he sent me, bro. He looks like a completely different person. He's got a full set of the hair now. So is that? Is I it, might have to stop in stop in Turkey. Is that? I was going to say, is it? Is that like a bit of a Turkish? Is there something going on, some sort of herbal remedy happening in Turkey just to fix your hairline? No, nah, no, nah, they're just known. They're known for the um, for this cheap, cheap. Uh, what is it? Hair transplant, and right. they do all the veneers and shit over there. So, uh, my daughter's and my first daughter, she's in in the UK. So, I might have to do a stopper, a little detour. Three, two. You yeah. might see me next year with, with the Tory Harris man, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, Jazzy. Um, just I guess uh, going back to the to the positional thing, and, and as Jello said, lots of people want to know. You know, what's your preferred position? Where do you want to play? I guess does it does it make it difficult um, as a player when you you sort of have an idea in mind of where you'd like to play? And for you, especially, you're in that position where I guess Webby sort of wants you to play a bunch of positions. You know, he wants you to be a utility guy who can cover a number of positions. Does it I guess make it harder for you to I guess nail down a, a full time role? It does, but um, the good thing about being able to play different positions, you know, you're versatile and um, you offer more than the stock standard, you know, person who can just play one position. Mm. Um, and then you're sort of more in favour to lock up a bench spot because, yeah, you cover a lot of different areas. And that's the good thing at the Warriors. We've got a lot of players that can play different positions. Like, team went down, there was no, no question, Chuck Roger, the fullback. If one of our centres went down, then obviously slide capes in there and then Barney goes to the back row. So, it's good we've got a lot of uh, versatile players because, um, yeah, when one goes down, then the next man fills in. Got a couple of questions here that have come through on the uh, Facebook page, which I'll put to you now. Some of them are a little bit lighthearted, so uh, maybe I'll get a few of those out of the way. Uh, Cameron says, uh, can you ask Jazz who out of the boys cooks the best feed? Not snags on the barbie, but actual good feeds. Ah, uh, jeez, I got all right, mate. Have you seen my Hello Fresh? Uh, <laughs> You're on Hello Fresh. He's there. on the Hello Fresh. He's a Hello Fresh king. <laughs> Are you, is that a sponsorship? Is it or uh, a future sponsorship? Yeah, yeah. I just had to drop that plug down there. 
ten percent um, off with jazz but, uh, jazz at the checkout. I'm not I'm not convinced on the photos, jazz, because every time the process that I'm looking at and then the end photo looks completely different. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sold that that's what you're making. <laughs> No, to be honest, bro, my missus is in the background telling me what to do, and then when the time come, Crezzo comes, she's the one plating up, and then I just, yeah, this is what I cook. <laughs> Jesus, you're a smart man. Some, somebody else is texting here saying, um, if you did a fight for life boxing match, a charity boxing match, who would be your ideal NRL opponent? Is there someone in the NRL you'd like to uh, get in the ring with? Probably Tori Harris. <laughs> you're hicking. You're friendly fire. Nah. Um, geez, I don't know. Nathan Brown, the, the player, not the coach, or the coach as well. <laughs> <laughs> we do a double header. Why not? Um, uh, there's another one here from Jared that says, uh, can you ask Jazzy what his favourite tune is? Why don't we go favourite tune, favourite artist? Tune, damn. That's it. My favourite artist will be uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, nice. Um, my favourite tune, geez, that's a hard one. I'm a bit of old school. Um Let's go with MJ Rock with you. Yeah, nice. How does that go? Have you heard that, Sammy? I don't know how that goes. How does it go, Jess? I want to rock with you. Ooh. Oh, Oh. (laughs) People thought they were on the wrong station there. They thought that was R&B late night. Jason, mate, you got nothing nothing to worry about (laughs) post-career, my friend. You'll be be running the karaoke bars. Uh, Another one Uh, here from uh, Carlos, um, and I'll just sort of paraphrase it. Um, Obviously, lots of lots of Kiwi lads in the team, and you guys probably get along really, really well. Um, How's Kurt Capel uh, fitting into you know the Warriors culture, the Warriors vibe? He seems to be adopting a lot of the the Kiwi isms. How is he? How is he gelling with you guys as a teammate? Yeah, he's going all right, Capes. Um, He's 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 a bit of a different different character that fella. Um, So. Yeah, it's funny when he um, we drops him, when we say morning Barry and he goes kill up <laughs> and he drops those little bars, those little lines that sort of gives you a little giggle. But um, no, nah, he's fitting in well, mate. He's he's different, but um, yeah, he's just capes. So no, nah, he's doing good. Nice. All right, Jazzy. Well, mate, um, busy week or busy couple of days ahead as we prepare uh, for for Sunday night as well um, against the Knights. What a game that was last year in 2023. So let's hope it's uh, it's a similar vibe this weekend, my friend. Really appreciate you jumping on, answering some of the, uh, li- the listeners' questions as well as putting up with Jello uh, for 10 minutes, mate. You're a great man, a, f- a fan favourite, like I said. And I know I speak on behalf of a lot of Warriors fans that say really hope you're, uh, you get something locked in uh, for 2025 and beyond at the Warriors. Thanks heaps for joining us, mate. Thank you, brothers. Appreciate it. Cheers, Jazzy. Jazz Tavanga there out of uh, the Warriors. A real, like I said, uh, Jello, real fan favourite. Lots of questions came in uh, through the Facebook and through the text machine. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's, I guess, the reality of the NRL, um, isn't it, that you've only, you can only offer a certain amount of contracts and there's going to be guys that you're not able to keep. And, and unfortunately for Jazz, he's just that guy that's teetering on the edge of the 17 and, and you know, he's making it some weeks, but then he's dropping out other weeks. And, it, we talked about it a lot. It's just the depth, isn't it, of the squad at the moment. We have just got so many guys that could be selected in that 17. Yeah, that there's yeah. a few quality guys missing out. It's the pros and cons of being a utility as well. Like, yes, yeah. you can play so many positions, but, you know, if you want to nail down a specialist, you kind of look out, you know, the, it's the utility that kind of gets pushed to the side. Yeah, yeah. As well, we saw with Surinan and um, uh, who was the other one? Joshy Curran as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Someone and I mean, even, almost. look, you know, I know Chanel's been getting a few few minutes just through injuries and stuff, but you know a full strength seventeen for Andrew Webster it may not include a, a Chanel Harris Tavita or a Jazz Tavanga or you know a, a Tamati Martin. So there's a lot of a lot of quality missing out, and there'll be a lot of NRL clubs circling those kind of guys wanting to bring them over. So um, we'll keep our eyes on that, see if, if anything gets locked in for Jazz. He is off contract at the end of this year, so I was looking for something in in 2025. Uh, we'll take a short break uh, here on Running It Straight. When we come back, uh, we'll have a look at the team lists for the Knights and the Warriors this Sunday at Go Media Stadium, Mount Smart, get into a little bit of analysis around that. Back in a moment. Running it straight here on SCNZ. Um, yeah, just I wanted to ask Jazzy for some dirt on you as well, Jello, but we just ran out of time. I'm sure he's got a couple of stories outside of um, you guys getting thrashed that uh, that Saturday night. Was it Saturday night, did you say? Um, yeah, yeah, after the game. So we, I think the game was, uh, it was like an afternoon game, late afternoon. But yeah, by the time you muck around, yeah, you didn't the, get any buffet in you, did you? Pre, oh, I was loaded up for the gills. <laughs> I knew I wasn't playing. Yeah, so yeah, Matt nah. Lodge on the Turkish uh, hair transplants. That's another interesting one. Um, That's huge in the UK. So many guys, especially in the Super League, because mm. they're all baldies over there. All the, all the ponds. yeah, okay, they're all baldies. So they all go <laughs> um, and what they do is they they pluck the hair from 
uh, the actual hair follicle yeah. from the back of your head, right. where it's still growing, yeah. and then they plug it on the corners. Wow. Up the top. That you, sound, you know a suspicious amount of the oh, operation. Oh, yeah. Well, I've seen it because it's like a preseason thing. You know, oh, Someone right. will come in and they'll still be recovering. So coach will be like, oh, you can't do this because he's recovering from a hair <laughs> transplant. <laughs> That's so funny that it's oh, like a no. real super common thing. Yeah. Um, the couple of texts that have just come through on double eight double three. Uh, Jeff, who's a great friend of the show, he's uh, texting saying, uh, Sammy, help. Uh, do I hold or trade Nathan Cleary, my fantasy team? I'm holding for now, but I'm tinkering every hour. It's me with me also wants to give a shout out to Blair from Wilkinson Trading and uh, Blair he does he does great work um, and I know he's a big fan of the rugby league coverage and of the commentaries as well so shout out to you Blair on uh, Nathan Cleary uh, not that we have sort of fantasy geniuses here uh, Jello but I think it depends on uh, whether you're in a head to head league versus an overall league are you do you play the regular NRL or do you play super coach I play the regular the regular right. yeah, you got Nathan I'm Cleary? in several several leagues now I don't have Cleary wow like from the get go. Yeah, I went eight and six. Oh, my money went elsewhere. Sure. Yeah. So I had I got Caesar in the halves, and the other one was um, your might Pines be or Matt. Fogarty. Your oh, might be. Uh, Where the heck are you spending your money if those are your halves? Made it. Yeah, but you play money ball. <laughs> brown paper bags. You get the brown paper bags, man. He's, he's unloading on the fullbacks. Uh, look, Jeff, if it's me, um, and I'm playing in a head to head league, not as important because you know you're going to drop some some head to heads across the weeks anyway. So uh, in that case, you're probably better to hold Nathan, who's probably out for I think it's three to five or four to five, um, and he's got a buy in there as well. So he's maybe only missing two or three games. Um, if you're in an overall league where you need to be getting points every week, then it's probably worth dropping him to put in like a Fogarty, someone who's a little bit cheaper and is still going to score high and make a little bit of cash. The, the, the problem for anyone who's listening and has any remote interest in fantasy is when you get, of a, get rid of a guy like Nathan Cleary, you've got to be careful that you can have that money to get him back in a couple of weeks because quite often people will trade him out get a couple of other guys in, they might lose a bit of money. And when Nathan mm. becomes available, they can't get him back because they haven't built the cash to get him back. So just be aware of that, Jeff. When does the when does the value drop? So as soon as he's injured, does the value No, no, you only your value only drops if you get out on the field. So that's your score. You only get a score if you take the field. Okay. Or, or actually if you're if you're on the bench and and you also technically are on the field. But mm. yeah, if you if you're out of the seventeen, if you don't play, you just get no price movement whatsoever. Oh, I um, see. But yeah, you obviously get the Reese Walshers when you're on for five minutes. You score two points or whatever and you lose a lot of cash because uh. you're, you're gone. Um, and Ryan says, uh, all the best for the call this weekend, fellas. RTS a, tro a lock for a try, I reckon. Have a great weekend. Well, we've got him. Well, I've got him and show me the money. So uh, yeah, I think it might be the weekend of the fullbacks this weekend. Right. Sunday, 6.05. It is the Warriors and the Newcastle Knights from Go Media Stadium uh, in Auckland. Uh, we'll go through the starting lineups very, very shortly. A couple of changes for the Warriors. Uh, Force with uh, Tain Tuopiki out with the HIA stand down and uh, Chancellor Klukstar still coming back from uh, from his injury. So look, from a fan perspective, Jello, they're getting what they want to see. Roger Tuivasa-Shek, he's in the number one jersey. Um, I'll get your thoughts on that very shortly, but I'll run through the rest of the team. Dalla Martinez, Lesniak, Marcelo Montoya, the wingers. Uh, Rocco Berry, Adam Pompey in the centre. So Adam Pompey coming in for Roger going to fullback. Metcalf and Johnson, the two halves. Uh, Fanua Blake Barnett, the two props. Wade Egan comes back in, named at hooker. Jackson Ford, Kurt Capel in the second row. Toru Harris, the 13. And then a pretty strong interchange of Freddie Lussick, Marata Niakore. He comes back. Bantia Foa and Dylan Walker. And I sort of want to go through the whole 17. But let's just start with Roger at fullback. Jello, are you happy to see him there? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to see him on the field any, anywhere he is, you know. But um, yeah, a lot of people want to see him back at fullback. Um, I thought Tane done a good job. Um, the tackle that, that knocked him out, they got him concussed. So right up on a head on head. Yeah. I don't see how that's much, is much different to the Reese Walsh. Um, right, the Reese Walsh tackle. What, what's your thoughts on that? What in terms of should a guy get sent off, or what well, do you mean? Yeah, like did you think because what, what's the outcome from the Reese Walsh? Uh, nothing, 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 nothing. Other than yeah. So what's what's all the noise about that? People say no. No, you know. I agree. I agree. And 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 there's there's a bit of chat around as well as well. If if it was um, if it was I don't know. Adam Elliott on Nathan Cleary, mm. then Adam Elliott would get suspended. Right, yeah, on Nathan Cleary. Exactly. But I don't, I don't buy it, Joe. Like I, um, yeah, I think 
uh, rugby league gets it right with that sort of stuff versus rugby union who will give the guy a red card and you'll be gone mm. for the whole game and probably get a suspension. Yeah. At the end of the day, and I think Phil Gould's seen this as, as, as well, at the end of the day, they are playing a game that is inherently physical and those sorts of moments are pure accidents. You cannot tell me that Taylor May did, went into that tackle to hit Reese Walsh head on head. Yeah, face Reese Walsh face. dropped just as he passed the ball and Taylor May almost got a fright, I think, that Reese Walsh had ducked a little bit into him. So he mm. sort of, he backs away as well. And yeah, they sort of collide face to face. I don't think there's anything in that. And it's sort of same with the Tane and Rapina ones. Like both of them were sort of bending, weren't they, in the tackles? Yeah, well, I think Tane had his head down and, you know, Rapin is just getting low to, yeah. to stop him from. And, you know, and, and, and you take that old adage of like, okay, well, if they completely rule that out, then why doesn't every person who's got the ball just run with their head down and they'll get a penalty every oh, time? Exactly. And you see you know? that in rugby. Yeah, you see exactly. them duck in. And, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, I, but but um, I guess the one thing that did surprise me was the fact that Rapina didn't have to go off for an HIA and Tane did, but that's that's a whole other conversation. Anyway, Rogers at the back. Um, so Pompey comes in to fill in his space as well. What do you make of that? I'm, I'm a big Ali Leotoa fan. I would have loved to see him uh, reprise that role, but they've gone, I guess, for experience. And Adam Pompey. So, what do you make of, of that switch as well? Yeah, it's interesting. Like, um, like you said, I thought Ali was would be next on the list. Um, but you know, Pompey he done a job last year. You know, and I think uh, you know if you look at that matchup, I think Bradman best. He's he's quite experienced. He's a big body. Um, not too sure which side they're on. If, if Pompey will be on Bradman best. Side. I think he's on Gagai's side. On I mean, side. either way, look, two two Origin centers so yeah. it's you know it's a, it's a formidable matchup but yeah, yeah it's a tough match i think the key for me is um you know where the warriors do have the upper hand is with the wingers okay so you got yep. tom uh you got jenkins and you got uh tuala coming in for you know mazu mm. and you know essentially dom young he's he's a he's a big hole he's left a massive gap in that team and i say that because you know you look at the roosters this year and what they've done to south last week um i don't think there's any other winger in the comp that turns opportunities into points as much as Dom Young. 100%. Like, if he gets into space from long range, he can burn people um, up in the air. He makes his catches in the corners, you know, close to the line. He's finishing everything. Um, I don't know what the stats are on, you know, opportunities converted to points, mm. but I think Dom Young leads that, and I think he's, I think he might be the best signing signing of I, the year. I think he'd be up there like you've got to ask yourself as well he scored what 22 tries 23 tries last year for the yeah. Knights and that's that old adage of like where are those 23 tries coming from and they're not coming from Thomas Jenkins or Tawala nah, exactly. so. and, and, and he compliments um, you know he's doing he's he complimenting Tedesco this year and finishing you know yeah. everything that he's creating and he done that for Ponga last year True. you know any half chance that Ponga made he finished it and you know put the icing on the cake um, Warriors Ford pack uh, does Wade Egan play this week you think I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think he was, you know, he looked like he was close last week. I think the changes that they did make last week were very last minute. So, you know, if you're cutting it that close, I'd say with another week, he'll, he'll, he'll be good to go. And then that means on the interchange, Freddie Lussick uh, stays on there as the 14. Then Maratini Akore comes back. I think, personally, I think that's a massive in for the Warriors. They've they've needed that punch off the bench. And mm. they, they sort of got it with Tom Ali and Jazz on Friday in Christchurch. But having Marata just basically is that he's almost he almost probably should be a starting prop now and he's mm. coming off the bench is going to add some real punch with with Bunty and then Dills Walker as well do you do you like that makeup is there anything maybe you consider changing you know heading into kickoff or maybe even in the subsequent weeks or you're pretty happy with the well I, I think you could you could change that lineup a little bit um depending on who you're playing against but no I like that I like that they've gone with the size um you know we saw what Marata done last year at prop when Barnett was injured with his neck um, for quite a quite a big chunk of the season, um, not sure if anyone saw it. Thirty fifth minute of the Canberra game, uh, Mitch holding his neck. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. You did see that. A yeah, bit yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because you we, we know he had some trouble with it last year, but um, he. I think that was in the first half. He came out and started the second half and mm. looked to be all right. But yeah. Um, you don't yeah. want to, you don't want to muck around with next man. I don't want um, to muck around with next, but it's um no nah, he yeah he knows what he's doing and um no nah, I like that that bench is a strong bench like you know any one of those guys coming in it's a bit like in cricket you know you got to change your bowler sometimes you think oh come on just hold on here you know yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. don't hit too many sixes but with this bench you know you're confident right. in, in all these guys yeah it's a great analogy um the Newcastle side uh Caelan Pong of course the captain at fullback then just with, as we mentioned Thomas Jenkins Inari Tuala the two wingers Dane Gagai Bradman best in the centres Gamble and Cogger are the two halves, uh, Jacob Saifita, Daniel Saifita, the two props, Phoenix Crossland, uh, Kiwi, number nine, uh, Tyson Frizzell, Kai Pierce paul that guy's an absolute weapon in the second row, uh, Adam Elliott, the number 13, then Jaden Braley, Matt uh, Croker, 
not Crocker, Croker, Jack Hetherington and Brody Jones on the interchange for Newcastle. Um, what do you make of this 17 uh, Jello? The start their start to 2024 20, uh, and where they are um, most dangerous across the park. Um, very looked like a bit of a complacent start to the season. Um, you know they cop that cop that loss to Canberra at home. Um, you haven't seen many teams losing at home. You know it seems mm. like you know with these big crowds as well. Home home ground seems to be a real advantage. Uh, but yeah, they lost that round one, round two went down again. But round three, that was when they made the changes. So Jackson Hastings, um, he got he got the flick Jack Cogger into the starting side, which is where he started during the trials and where they kind of seemed to look look like they're playing their best footy. Was when Jack Cogger was on the field and uh, last week against Melbourne um, got the job done as well. They looked they looked a bit settled, but still still not quite themselves. Melbourne Melbourne weren't great, but yeah, Knights Knights kind of ground that win out. Mm. So. Sunday, six oh five. What are you? What are you thinking? What's your prediction? I'm thinking Warriors. I think hometown, uh, hometown advantage, home game. Um, I'm thinking they'll they'll look to build on what they did last week. I think they'll have a little bit more points in them. Um, I think defensively, um, they can't they can't let in more than twelve sixteen. I think. So what do you reckon? Score line? Score line. I think Warriors got about twenty points in them, and if they got to they got to keep Newcastle to twelve. One try. Twenty twelve. That's twenty twelve. There yeah. you go. Heard it here first. I wonder what that's paying at the TAB. Right. So uh, that is Warriors night six oh five on Sunday. We do have live commentary that here on ECNZ. Build up from five with kickoff at six oh five. Um, what we're going to do is take a break now, and when we come back, we'll have a look at some of the other big games. There are some absolute barnstormers this weekend uh, across the round. Pretty hard round to tip as well, but we'll try and make sense of it all right after this. Welcome back into Running It Straight here on ECNZ. Uh, Sam Hewitt and Anthony Galling uh, talking league until 3pm before we hand over to the run home. We're going to have a look at the other games on in round four this weekend. Starting tonight with an absolute blockbuster, Roosters v Panthers. Uh, the Panthers with no Nathan Cleary, no James Fisher-Harris, no Scott Sorensen. The Roosters starting to find their way. I'd have them up towards the top of the power rankings. They do sit second on the NRL ladder after thrashing the Rabbits last week. What do you reckon, uh, Jello, in this one? I've got the Roosters in a pretty low-scoring one, to be honest. I think the Roosters' attack looked too good for it to be low-scoring. You think so? Yeah, I'm not but sure the what Panthers the... Defense, you know, I one thing the Panthers, even without Nathan Cleary, I think their defence still holds strong. I still think they're a team that doesn't give up 20 points. That's that's very true, and I think that's the, that's the difference between a good team and a bad team. Totally. A good team will lose, mm -hmm. but will not get blown out. Yeah. You know, you look at the game that Panthers have lost this year when they got beat by the Broncos. You know, they were quite rusty, 8-0. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. a... Storm. Oh, was it the Storm? storm yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, it was the yep. Storm, 8-0. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. And I think that's sort of actually the Warriors, what's turned them around over the last two years is that adage as well, that even when they've lost games, they haven't, yeah. like in the past, they haven't been blown off the park. Yeah. Um. So what do you reckon? It's at Allianz, so it's a home game for the Roosters. Yeah, Roosters for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but I... 12 yeah. and under? I don't know. I think they'll Did get they, up. I think they'll oof, get up two tries. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's uh, who's an anytime try scorer for the punters? Dom Young. Yeah. Easy. Easy, easy money. money. Yeah, um, easy tomorrow money. night at six oh five, the uh, early night Friday game. Um, that's actually earlier than usual, isn't it? Six oh five, I guess, because it's Easter Friday. Uh, Rabbits Bulldogs, and this one's an interesting one because I think I'm going to tip the uh, tip the Bulldogs it's at a core stadium. Um, South's not missing anyone. Just an absolute shambles of a team right now at zero and three. Mm. The Bulldogs actually looking pretty good. Well, sometimes when you are going that bad, as bad as the rabbits are, there is that little resurgence where, you know, you have the crisis meeting and, you know, you will see individuals stand up, you mm. know, because they'll sit down on that meeting and look each other in the eye and go, okay, something's got to change. And they'll, they'll you know, take a stand and make a vow, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be that guy this week. And you, you see it sometimes. Um, I think we saw it with the Tigers last week. You know, they were getting stick, yeah. you know, saying they're this and that, and, you know, they're, they'll, they'll never come good. But um, they, they really stood up last week yep. and had that. Um, but, yeah, it's not a it's not a consistent thing. You know? So what So what do you reckon then? Do you think that's going to be what the Rabbits do? I think it's going to be an awesome game. Yeah, I think yeah, Bulldogs yeah. might get them, but I think Rabbits will go down swinging. If they go 0-4, how, how long do you give Jason Demetrio before those uh, echoes from the, from the NRL public get a bit too loud? Well, I don't think it'll be the echoes from the public. I think it'll be who's the next guy to replace him and when can you get here? Because mm. I think they might have their eye on Sam Burgess. Right, okay. So Sam Burgess was there, yep. you remember, and then he left over. So he's over at Warrington now. Yep. Um, I reckon they're already in conversation with Sammy Burgess. Is he, is he, do you think he's the answer? Do you think he's the I fix? think he's the answer. And I think um, a lot of boys will, will love to see him there. And I think it, I think it was bad timing when he was there. Yeah. But I think he's the guy to come back and... 
he definitely didn't see eye to eye with Jason Demetrio. Um, nah, but he's best mates with Rusty. Rusty yeah, loves him. Right, yeah. The boys uh, love him, yeah. Uh, so we're going Bulldogs in a close one? Yep. Uh, Broncos, Cowboys tomorrow night at 10 p.m. That's also another absolute barn burner. No Reese Walsh, but uh, Josh Reynolds, sorry, Josh Reynolds, Adam Reynolds comes back into the side. Uh, that That's going to be a cracker. Payne Huss, in or out? Uh, he's out. He's out for a while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think without Reese, without Payne Haas, um, there's always that Broncos Cowboys thing. There's that rivalry. I think the Cowboys take it a lot more seriously. It's like you know we're the little brother, so yep. we're gonna mm-hmm. um, we're gonna come to Suncorp. You know that's a hell of a stage, and they always play good. They always play good there. Um, I think Cowboys get it done. Right, uh, quickly running through the rest of them. Dragon Sea Eagles Saturday seven thirty. Uh, sea Eagles thirteen plus. Yeah, I think that's a I think it's a cricket score potentially. Um, Titans Dolphins Saturday at nine thirty five. Uh, Dolphins Titans with no Tino. Mm. Uh, Dolphins Flegler's playing good. I think they're going to smoke them through the middle. Warriors Knights we've already spoken about. Sharks Raiders on Sunday after the Sharks losing to the Tigers. There's sort of question marks on that one. Uh, they've got a couple of injuries, a couple of outs as well. What do you reckon? I reckon that could be the closest game of the round. Mm. I think you could flip a coin. I think it's going to finish in a draw. Wow. That's my prediction. Just a straight draw. No straight draw. Oh, there'll be a golden point, yeah, but, but yeah, you could flip a coin right. who's going to win that. There you go. 50 for the And Eels West Tigers on Monday, on Easter Monday at 6 p.m. Eels. Convincingly? No Mitchell, Mo- no, no, no Mitchell Moses, no, uh, well, potentially no Bryce Cartwright if the rumours are to be true. Mm, but I still, still take the Eels. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the Tigers could do something. Uh, storm with the bye this week. Lots of upsets on the cards this weekend. I think that's the key thing. Lots of upsets on the cards are going to ruin some NRL multis. They're going to ruin uh, some tipping competitions as well. Uh, we'll take our last break here on Running It Straight Closeout before we hand over to the run home. Two minutes away from three, and just before we hand over to the run home, um, Jello news that came through this afternoon. The Warriors are going to have uh, an NRLW team back in the competition next year. Um, so the league moving to 12 teams, uh, 11 game regular season, two game final series uh, so awesome to see the uh, the Warriors getting NRLW team back 100% that was always the, the chat that the team was coming back and then for a, a little segment there earlier in the year they were like oh we don't know if it's happening Yeah, no, there was a bit of a licensing issue and, yep. and you just thought man no way like it has to happen like mm. the amount of girls coming through I do a lot of stuff with the Auckland Rugby League and the girls comps huge man the talent's unbelievable yeah. um, heaps of girls in Aussie but they need Oh, they yeah, need there's, that pathway. There's yeah. tons already playing in the uh, in the NRLW team, so to have them uh, playing for the Warriors is going to be fantastic. And a real credit to the club for getting out of that COVID um, you know situation where they lost a lot of the junior teams, lost the women's team. They've been able to build it yeah. back up, but it's, not even um, just for the players, but for the coaches, the managers. Like there's so many other roles that come into that. So yeah, yeah it's nah, awesome for the club. Hundred percent. Great All for right. the game. That's us uh, for another Thursday. We'll hand over to the run home, and we'll be back next week. See you there. It's the NZ. It's Kiwi for Sport.